Yo, 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 yo. What's up, everybody? What up? How's it going? Yo, yo. So, up in the booth today, we got with us Mr. Jordan Anthony is here with us. Those of you who don't know Jordan, he is a fantastic singer and guitarist and songwriter and explorer of all things inner and outer space <laughs> this is true <laughs> well put, well put. <laughs> and and everything else all around cool guys so thanks for coming on man hey no problem it's awesome to be here yeah thanks for driving out bro yeah it's spotty but yeah yeah indeed the weather's kind of bullshit tonight yeah we, we got this yeah cool so we were talking about uh uh, at dinner, we were talking a little bit about ayahuasca, and you've never done actual ayahuasca, is that correct? No, not ayahuasca. Yeah. I've done DM DMT. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So times. when you did DMT, was it smoking it? Yeah. Or like... yeah, it was like vaping it, basically. Okay. You get it hot in a glass, and yeah. Oh, okay. So, was it fucking out of control? Dude, it's... <laughs> me talking about it is interesting, but it doesn't even compare to yeah what it was um it's hard to explain do you want me to tell you my yeah man yeah right. yeah so i did it twice i'll tell you about the first time maybe go into the second time later or something but so the first time so you know terrence mckenna he's like yeah. that psychonaut he, yeah you know oh yeah but he's just like you got to take three hits uh yeah yeah uh, yeah and all that so, and you hear about people doing dmt and they don't break through because they don't get to that third hit yeah um and I definitely got to that third hit. Yeah. And so what happened is as soon as I hit it, I heard like cellophane in my ears, like, <laughs> like this crackling. Really? And just the world sort of, it changed. And uh, it was like the peak of an acid trip after one hit immediately. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, then the second hit, you're like, whoa, you know, geometric, everything everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um nothing's the same and you can barely take that third hit yeah but so that, were you doing open eye sorry to interrupt open mm -hmm. eye or closed eyes when you're doing this the after the second or after the third hit i was out okay yeah there's nothing in front of me so I, w when i hit the third one there was like this mandala like this buddhist mandala like in front of my face and i went through it like an like a membrane it was like a membrane of some kind whoa and the next thing you know, I'm like flying over a city. It was like this very Gotham-esque, like sharp corners, dark, um, that kind of vibe. Yeah. Uh, and I'm just like flying like in a dream. And I hear a baby cry. <laughs> Wild. Yeah. And it's just like, ah! and I'm like, and next thing you know, I'm in this alleyway, like dark, cryptic gotham -esque alleyway <clears throat> and i see this victorian style kind of like gothic baby crib what the fuck right so how realistic was this all dude was this was this like a a verbatim of life so to speak or was it like some interpretation of this stuff like did no it look like i was there setting? okay i was there okay and i look down in this crib and there's a baby <clears throat> and it's like cold and like shivering and scared and like crying, just like abandoned in this alleyway in this weird Gotham esque city that I'm all of a sudden a part of. And next thing you know, I'm the fucking baby, dude. Oh, uh, dude, I was Whoa. gonna make a joke. It was you. <laughs> so I was gonna make a Bruce Wayne joke. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and so I'm like. The one crying and cold and like abandoned and alone. And I, I like wake up out of this trip. Yeah. And I'm like in a fetal position, like crying and like just all fucked up, dude. Whoa. And I had this realization that I was not like facing my abandonment issues. Oh, okay. Yeah. And my whole life changed after that. Damn. Wow. Yeah. So it really affected you on like a real, oh, yeah. a real level. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, definitely a lesson there. Um, but that's like a lot of therapy in just like 15 minutes or whatever it was. Right. Holy shit, man. That's out <clears throat> of control. Mm -hmm. It's interesting with psychedelics, man. There is no deeper inward look. Like if you've got some skeletons in the closet, it's going to expose that shit real fast, oh, right? Yeah. Like the whole edict that you just said, right? Like 20 years of therapy and 
X amount of minute type trip. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people just aren't, just aren't ready for that. You know, they may want to, they say, they say they're ready for healing, yeah, but they don't want to lose control. Right. What was your feeling when you were in there? Were you scared? Was it just kind of it, soaking it was it just all happening okay. like a very, very like realistic dream. Um, but I got there so fast and it just all it, the words just don't do it justice. Like, yeah, of course, of <clears> course, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the second time was I didn't really get any lesson at all, yeah, but it was fucking wild, yeah. <laughs> So I go to, I take the third hit. Let's fast forward to that. Yeah. Um, and all of a sudden I'm in like this room, just like they, I think they call it hyperspace or, uh, the waiting room or something like that. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in each corner of this room, there's like, so machine elves, everybody's heard of them. Yeah. Like everybody's not, everybody says they see them, but they exist as some kind of archetype or some kind of like mm-hmm. common symbol that you see. Um, but in each corner of the room, there's like this like eight bit, like sort of gnome looking thing, what the fuck? but it looked like eight? Nintendo oh, or something. Oh, that's a different Damn, way of dude. describing it that I've heard. <clears throat> that's interesting. Yeah. And they were dancing and they'd meet in the center of this, the is almost like a screen, but it, just this one room. And, They'd combine together and then they'd show me this like thing that was like some kind of mechanism and they, and they did that five times and the mechanism was different. Whoa. And I had no idea what it was they were showing me, but they were very excited to show me. Damn. Did you ever watch Aqua Teen Hunger Force? Yeah, I've, <laughs> I've seen that. Yeah, I know that seems like a leap, but there's the two Moon and Night guys that are the eight bit creatures that combine oh, together. Yeah. Ig- Ignignock and Ur. <laughs> right, right. We had the Moon and Nights. Yep. Yep. No. Yeah. But <laughs> was some deep cut Aqua Team I'm knowledge you, there. I'm telling you. Uh, the way they sounded was weird too. Mm-hmm. It was like, what the like fuck? they were like, like showing me this shit. And so the next phase of the trip, like they were sad to see me go. Uh, but I just kind of got sucked into this. Like it was almost like I was in a, uh, like an artery or some kind of meaty cavern. <laughs> and uh, I was like a blood cell just like darting around. like uh-huh. Magic school bus style. Yeah. Continue. Mm-hmm. I mean, but it was so weird because that was more real. Like I've never felt something more real like this. Coming back from that, like a DM tree, D- DMT trip, <laughs> Like it, reality is different. Yeah. Because it's different. Like that was real. Yeah, this Uh is real. Like, so what's going on? Whoa. So what's your take on all that? Because they're, you know, you get the camp of people, like the Mm -hmm. more sane camp, normal camp, whatever you want to call it. Like, yep, this is all in your mind. This is Mm -hmm. yada, yada. Or this is truly some other dimension, other gateway type thing. Like, Like, what's your real creatures? Yeah. Yeah. I don't necessarily believe that it's um, another tangible dimension. I think it's brain chemistry for sure that we all share that could kind of seem like one, like seeing the same things and, you know, having this sort of same kind of experiences, but slightly different. Like, yeah, I don't know, but I'm tending toward that we just don't know anything. Right. At all. Huh. So you're thinking because people share similar or see similar shit because we all have similar brain makeup and brain chemistry. So therefore we could potentially all be seeing the same shit. Because it's so, I mean, the big question and what we're asking is why does everybody see fucking machine elves or these like Mm -hmm. archetypes like you're saying? To Mm -hmm. that point, did you watch and listen to the Terrence McKenna stuff before that? That's a good point. Or did you get into it after? Uh, That's a good point. It is, yeah. But but uh I would would say that you're right about that if these things weren't actual entities they're not just like projections they're real like they're trying to communicate with you you it's fucking wild like when i say real right now 
I mean, yeah, I was there. Damn. And yeah, but like people talk to you in your dreams and stuff, you know, or, or whatever. But these are you can see it's different. Yeah. you can see their details. You can see more depth. Uh-huh. And if maybe it's possible that you know it is just like a very very advanced dream. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't okay. know. I kind of like the idea that we're fucking tapping into some other reality and this shit's like some, it's it is real, real, real. And these are some kind of other creatures. Or it's a lot cooler to think I know. about for sure. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. honestly, who the fuck knows, man? Yeah, we man. really don't know, don't you know. God like, clue, dude. Think, you know, the thing they always go to when people are having these arguments is, well, we didn't know the, the ultraviolet spectrum existed yeah, yeah. until blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. You know, we couldn't see inside of people before x-rays. We didn't yeah. know microbes existed before yeah microscopes and that kind yeah. of thing so. well they're doing like tests with people they're like people are on dmt drips yeah like, they're like constantly ex- exploring the realm extended yeah. out like 30 minutes instead it's, of the usual 5 to 15 <sighs> out of that stuff yeah that's out of control yeah when you think about like there's all that like string theory and shit too just parallel universes and shit so it's like a vibration if you're able to like move the vibration into this other if it's we like can somehow radio, quantify you know? that, mm-hmm. if we can somehow correlate the two, like mathematics and, you know, have science apply in that world, you know? You know what I think? Uh, what if you had like, so you got these guys that are doing DMT drips, like you're saying in there. Mm-hmm. So what if you had like, you go in, you meet some kind of creature, you give that creature a message. That's then, what they're trying to do. Yeah, and then that creature gives that message to the next guy, mm-hmm. and that you know, that and it's correct or whatever. Yep, they're trying to form some kind of like real world connection. Damn, it's so wild, man. And they're really <laughs> starting to because obviously, like back in the sixties and stuff, it was just starting to kind mm-hmm. of you know be in its infancy and pick up steam and like psychedelics as a whole being studied. Then obviously all that stuff got nixed, but they're really starting to pick it back up now. Like Johns oh, Hopkins, yeah. mm-hmm. um, University of Michigan, I think actually that makes does sense. a fair amount with psychedelics and, and that Arbor's sort of thing. super uh, uh, like shroom. Yeah, yeah. But like shroom. Harvard, I think yeah. has started to, so like all sorts of mm-hmm. legit, you know, top tier medical yeah. type facilities. Are Harvard was the, they were the ones doing it back in the fucking Dizzy with fucking all that acid research. Yeah, and shit, Timothy right? Leary, yeah. right? Was at yeah. Harvard before he got. Yeah, Shit all that hand out there, I believe. The fucking Unabomber guy. Oh, Ty yeah. Kaczynski. All that. Yeah, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. All that fucking crazy shit. Living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> Doing acid out there. Yeah, yeah, that's what all that, that ties into all that crazy CIA oh, shit. Oh, the MK and all Ultra that. stuff. Yeah, the MK Ultra stuff. You got it, man. Yeah. yeah what man. a fucked up, you think about that, man. Like, not that I can speak firsthand, you know, those are illegal substances that I would know nothing about, <laughs> but a friend of mine very close to me. Like, you're in such a vulnerable state with that stuff, and people are pumping a bunch of shit into your mind and intentionally trying to freak you out. Like, yeah. What a horrific circumstance that, that has got to be to find yourself in. Jesus, man. Yeah, man. Well, yeah, I mean, the CIA, there's these CIA documents that are unclassified now where, you know, you can read about how they were researching on how to astral travel. Mm-hmm. I don't know the name yeah. of it, but um, it's they found something there. Yeah, yeah. But that shit's fucking wild too. I've read a, uh, I probably read like maybe two books on really? that back in the okay. day or something. These nice. fucking guys doing all that fucking. Uh, uh, it's not not even just that, but uh, they were really into the remote viewing, which is oh, not the same thing as right. Like the, that's like a Cold War but, thing with the yeah, Russians. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The men who stare at goats. Yeah, have you ever seen that? Yeah, that like was George Clooney was loosely yeah. based on yes. that whole thing yeah. with the ast- or, you know, the yeah. remote viewing yeah. and all of that. So, I yeah. did read that. That was a thing that was like in the zeitgeist of high strangeness before that, and then that book came out later, but. Yeah, that's some fucking wild shit. I don't know, because some of it's pretty convincing, and then some of it's kind of like one of those things where like there's a certain percentage that you're going to get right anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. It's wild. It, but then there's like the idea that it was all just manipulation, mm-hmm. nation against nation. Yeah. You know, it just wasn't anything, but yeah, uh, propaganda, basically. Yeah. Shit. That shit's fucking out of control, man. So have you messed around with other psychedelics outside of DMT, or is it kind of a two and done thing? Oh, like- yeah, I'm, I, I think I've pretty much done them all. Okay. Um, except ayahuasca, I've never done um mescaline either. Okay. Uh, yeah, ayahuasca, man. I think I'd rather. I would definitely do ayahuasca. 
like doing the whole thing. Oh know? yeah, big time. Yeah, I mean, just the just being in that environment, you know, the the natural jungle and the animals all around you, and oh the man, jaguar coming oh, yeah. to life. All the, yeah, yeah, it'd be intense, man. It Whew. sounds like it's intense. Find your spirit animal. So, what was your first experience, and what was the substance that you were on at the time? Like the first time you ever tripped? I it was acid. Okay, and. Somebody put a, a lot of it in my mouth at uh, this. <laughs> 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 it was at a rate like a, they were called kicks raves. This dude from Detroit I knew used to throw them in Muskegon. Oh, okay. And uh, this is before anybody knew what raves were. Like, yeah. and well, around here anyway. Yeah. So he got away with it for a little while. Like all these young kids like me going in there and mm-hmm. um, doing drugs. But yeah, somebody put a huge, it must have been probably, probably four or five hits um holy shit yeah. damn dude mm-hmm. that's yeah. a lot yeah treading into some deep water right off the yeah. bat for your first time that's intense yeah i mean i met a girl and the relationship lasted for like four years and oh shit yeah so all right fair enough yeah, yeah. <laughs> not that it was the greatest relationship but yeah it's just <laughs> it's a weird pretense yeah to start it <laughs> on uh is acid your favorite like what's your i mean my favorite thing is something i don't want to do all the time because it's not that good for you uh ecstasy oh yeah yeah um but it's it's wonderful that's one i've never done actually it's wonderful uh we tried we bought some shit uh from a dude at bonnaroo and uh it was basically just like junk speed basically it wasn't like molly yeah but, it wasn't even that it was just bullshit we just we basically got burned by mm-hmm. some guy selling some bullshit and so broke up some adderall and yeah in, yeah. yeah it was just, it, i didn't even like hardly do that i mean like so yeah, this yeah. that stinks, but it 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 it's definitely um on par with psychedelics if you yeah. get pure MDMA. Yeah. yeah. Have you tried ketamine? Yes, and I don't remember it because I I did a line and I just laid on a couch and everything just sort of stopped and I came back to and I had the worst headache in the world. Damn. That's not a great time. Does not yeah. sound terribly enjoyable. Yeah, um, you know, I might try it again someday, but I, yeah. it's never called to me. No. Yeah, I would definitely try. You know, who's that comedian? Neil Brennan. Let's talk. Do mm-hmm. you know who that is? Yeah, he's done a lot of that shit trying to cure his depression, and he was saying yeah. that he uh, was taking it in in a controlled environment, like in a doctor's office. You know, they see do that's what I wouldn't do. Yeah, well, he's saying like he's like I thought I was gonna go and they were gonna give me a low dose and they were gonna you know. And he was like, in five minutes, I was tripping balls. He's like, I was just fucking out. He was in a gone. sterile environment. Yeah. yeah, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I, don't I know. think I would kind of, I would definitely try that. In like a controlled environment yeah. with a nurse and stuff? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those yeah. are starting to become pretty prevalent. I think there's mm-hmm. actually, or at least was, a ketamine clinic in Grand Rapids. I don't oh, know really? if it's still around, but I remember reading about that one time. Yeah, it's supposed to be wildly effective for expensive? depression. Yeah. I think it's like 500 or something. Okay. Something like That's that. That's my concern with the like mushrooms terrible. too. Like they're just going to start charging people a bunch of fucking money. For know? something that's, yeah, just literally girls on shit. Yeah, go know? to the like, woods and take some and, yeah. you know, hug yeah, a tree right. or two. And, yeah. But everybody's different, you know? Yeah. So. With Have something you, like ketamine, uh, that the thing about it is, is like that's something I don't want to like fuck around with. That's why I think I'd, I would do it if it was a controlled environment with somebody like. I don't know, dosage and shit. Cause that shit, I mean, you can fucking kill yourself easy on that shit. Yeah. It's definitely, I dissociated and I do remember just sort of being part of the ceiling mm-hmm. kind of just like almost like you have a bird's eye view, but I don't know how much of that was real or, you know, yeah. like that. It's almost like a remote viewing thing where you can see uh, below you. Weird. Have you ever had a really like bad, horrific trip on anything before? Hmm. I've had uh weird things happening happen while tripping that, you know, were just not fun to deal with and had to correct the the vibe. Right. You know? Mm. Um but for the most part, um, no. I mean it's just all about your mind and where you're at in life. And I've always made sure not to do it in the wrong setting. Yeah. Yeah, that's huge for yeah. sure. <laughs> Uh, you just have to be comfortable and be around good people and, you know, no Meyer lighting or anything like that. And you're good. Right. Right. right, right. <laughs> yeah. I remember one time I uh, did mushrooms and uh, we were having a pretty good time and I, I went into the bathroom and turned the light on and it was full on like a fluorescent light or whatever. And it was like a 
different fucking reality. <laughs> it was so weird. You could hear the light. Uh, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> and I sat there uh, staring at a towel for like 20 minutes. <laughs> it was like a fucking amoeba. The t- You could see just every little thing and the, t- the little nap of the towel was just like moving. I was just like, oh my God. Just hanging out with Tally <laughs> in the bathroom. Uh-huh. So, yeah. <laughs> so while uh, on the subject of drugs, we might as well keep talking about it for a minute. Like the, uh, the motion sickness pill, Dramamine. Mm-hmm. So I never, I rarely tell this story because it's just wild, but it's not very long. So Kevin and I took a bunch of Dramamine back in, I mean, we were young, like just out of high school maybe. And like 30 pills of this stuff each. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Jesus. And so we're like, let's take a walk. So we take a walk. There's like this bike sitting there and it disassembled and assembled and disassembled and assembled. <laughs> and uh, we both saw it. That we, like we had shared hallucinations. Like we heard uh, geese, like a, oh, like yeah. a, we look in the sky. Like, oh, look at that flock of geese, and it just broke apart, and it wasn't there. Wow, what the fuck! And at one point, Kevin left. I don't remember him leaving, but we got sucked into our dreams. You can't tell the difference between the dream and reality, which is why it's a scary thing to do. Um, I've, I've read horror stories on it, on like Volts of Arrowhead and stuff Damn. like that. I didn't know that you could get that fucked up. I've taken drama mean a bunch and it definitely gets you kind of fucked up. You got to take a lot of it. Yeah. Especially, I don't even know if you can do it anymore. They might've changed it. So uh, you can't. Yeah. Um, but so he left and then I was walking and I saw my friend on this porch of this house and she's like, Hey Jordan, come here. And this is like two o'clock in the morning and real world time not mm-hmm. in dream time and so i walk into this house <laughs> no, i did not know yeah but i just yeah. followed my friend in and i see her walk around a corner so i'm like walking after her and she i walk into this room and i see her sit down on like this chest like some kind of treasure chest or something um and i sat on this bed like in front of her and this old lady pops up behind me, dude. Yeah. <laughs> wow, man. <laughs> and my friend just disappeared. Jesus. So, it, yeah. And she's like, <gasps> oh, my God, who are you? What are you doing here? What are you? you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. She just started to freak out. And I'm just like, my friend Helena told me to meet her here. For some reason, out of the blue, like, I don't know if I actually meant, like, if I was believing my own dream or if it was just some excuse I made up at the time. Yeah. Uh, but she led me out and she looks at me and she goes, she looks at me dead in the eye and she's like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> and I'm just like, if my friend Helena <laughs> shows up, tell her to give me a call. And I, I just walk home. And luckily I didn't get shot or yeah, arrested man. or some shit like that. Oh so, shit, it was I thought you meant you hallucinated no. all that. That actually Oh he, he, okay. yeah, he went into the house hallucinating. That's this was uncomfortable. Some random Jesus. person's house. Yeah, that's everybody's worst nightmare. Yeah. I was hoping you and the old lady were gonna hook up. Oh know? god. <laughs> <laughs> and then we boned and you know it was great. <laughs> I'm the old lady. You know? <laughs> Yeah, man, that's that's fucking wild. That's crazy. Some of that stuff is it scopolamine? Am I thinking of the right name? It's I don't know. One, um, it's the one you hear about that sometimes in like Africa and over there they'll give it to tourists and it like oh, a makes yeah. you really mm-hmm. suggestible, but b like puts you literally in like we are having this conversation real as day. That's the same thing. With Angel's and then trumpet. Ibogaine too was yeah. the other one where you just hallucinate like the uber reality but the stuff that's not even happening well i began like or ebook i'm not quite sure how it's pronounced but it's very very effective for treating uh opioid addiction yeah yeah like in the 90th percentile effective but it's so expensive for one like they do it in mexico yeah yeah people go down there to get it because you can get it way cheaper right so they go down there to do that to kick the opiate thing yeah that's the thing it's so expensive and uh, this is western society we're still not ready for that mm-hmm. you know maybe we are and that sounds like almost universally a horrific trip and it lasts for fucking ever well dude. they call it's like yeah. 18 hours sometimes Ooh. more than 24 hours yeah well they call ayahuasca uh the loving mother and um ibogaine the uh stern father yeah oh shit 
I never heard that. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I heard this story about one time. So it's, I think Iboga is the root from which I began okay. is derived, right. if I'm right. remembering that correctly. But yeah, to your point, they use it to get people off of like a really serious addiction. Yeah. There was this person that was a heroin addict and they went for an Ibogaine treatment and part way into the treatment, they start fiending, you know, predictably because they were really hooked on the stuff. So the guy's digging around in this bag. He's like, oh, maybe I have some in here. Maybe I've got something. Found heroin in there, takes it, starts to overdose and like die while he's on Ibogaine and he's freaking out. Then after many hours, he comes to and realizes that that was just a projection. Like there was no heroin, never happened. Holy shit. But yeah, and that's what that shit does. Again, to that point, it's like that super deep dive mm -hmm. where you were in the recesses of your mind. Whoa. You are seeing the real, real. It's 20 years of fucking therapy and X amount of hours. Yeah, hallucinated the whole thing. Never touched it again and shit like that. But it's supposed <laughs> to be terrifying. <laughs> mm -hmm. But if you got to get off fucking H, dude, yeah, you got to yeah, do what you sure. got to do, man. Yeah, and, and just the physical addiction aspect of it, like it resets some kind of... yeah. You know, yeah. it's, uh, uh, sense, not yeah. sensor, but the, the synapses yeah. in your fucking yes. mind or whatever. Something. Yeah, that's crazy. Do you ever yeah. catch any, uh, do you know Michael Pollan? Yes, he has a new do uh, documentary yeah, series. Yeah, he's got a yeah. four-part documentary mm -hmm. series, but he's he is like a really serious writer, like straight-edge guy. You know, he writes on fine cooking and all this random stuff and decided to like go down that rabbit hole. And oh, been, yeah, I've heard of that guy. Yeah, he's yeah. been on Rogan a handful yeah. of times. He's on all sorts of podcasts and stuff. But he always quotes this one guy who's like a Swedish neuroscientist, which is the best way I've ever heard it put. And the way that he said it was like, essentially your brain, think of it like a uh, like a ski slope or like a sledding run down a hill, right? And you keep cutting those same grooves. You can sled faster and faster down the hill, but those grooves get cut in, right? They get weighed down, snow builds up on the side, and you just fly down those paths, and he describes it as a fresh layer of snow kind of covering up those old grooves uh, and pathways. So you can take different. So it's sort of a fresh reset. Uh -huh. And then you start thinking about so shit. You take a different path. Yeah. 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 You catch yourself in those patterns and, you know, you've got that, whatever it is, like I've got negative self-talk or something like, oh, I'm a dumbass. Why do I do that? And then all of a sudden you're like, hey, I'm not a dumbass. You know what? That negative <laughs> reinforcement's fucking bomb, dude. Yeah. Like that's because... I got pancreatitis uh, a couple years ago and uh, I just, I was drinking way too much, way too much during the pandemic. And I just, you know, and I didn't even start drinking until I was 35 and I just started just slamming vodka. Damn. Um, vodka too. Ooh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Smirnoff. <laughs> yeah. Fuck dude. <laughs> Blue label, baby. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing, but yeah. Hey, what's up, friends? We got to take a quick break from the show here for a second to let you know that there is not going to be a Dangerville podcast for the next two weeks because we are moving. We're moving studios. So bear with us through the holidays here, and we are going to be back in full force in January. We have a ton of killer guests already lined up in January. We've got Tony Piccoli and Pat DeLeon from Imminent Sonic Destruction coming in. Uh, we got drummer extraordinaire Brucifer coming on the show, and we've got Larry from Iron Sharpens Iron coming on. Uh, he is a fantastic musician and all-around excellent dude to talk to. Uh, plus, we got a ton of killer guests lined up beyond that that I'm not at liberty to talk about right now, but it's going to be huge. All right, so I also need to let you know about another podcast called Telephone Stories, The Trials of Michael Jackson. This is a show that I produced with my pals Bubba and Omar and our friend John, who does amazing music. Um, it's really Bubba's show. I did all the editing and mixing. Omar's the uh, co-star of it. Um, so it's kind of the four of us made it. It's a documentary-style show all about Michael Jackson and the allegations against him. And it's an interview show where we interview some incredible guests that were all uh, there so we're talking about Michael's lawyers, the prosecuting lawyers, uh, journalists, uh, people that were close to all of them. Um, it's really extraordinary. It's about 17 hours long, I think is what it clocked in at. So we did it for the Luminary Network. So it's from Luminary. It's still on Luminary, but it's finally released into the wild. You can check it out on 
Uh, let's see. It's on Spotify. It's on Apple. And I think it's probably about anywhere that you can get podcasts. So again, it's called Telephone Stories, The Trials of Michael Jackson. Peep that out. It, it's 100% worth listening to. It. It's incredibly high uh, production value, if I do say so myself. Uh, it's a great show. Check it out. Okay, back to the show. Peace. What do you call that? Something sin. Oh, guilty pleasure. Yeah, <laughs> guilty pleasure. <laughs> you nutty buddy. I mean, 259 for all those. Jesus. Oh, you can't go wrong, baby. That Little L. Debbie. Debbie. You, you can go really wrong, actually. Yeah, you can. <laughs> I'm a big fan of the center split of the nutty buddy. You got to peel them apart, get the, uh, the individual layers. See, that's, I don't like that's touching my go-to them. Movie. Yeah, I don't, I, don't like, I don't like nutty buddies at all. You guys are fucking crazy. What do you like? Nutty buddies? How do you not like nutty eh, buddies? Bro? I'm not Sleep a big on the peanut nutty butter buddy. like. I don't know. I like a fudge round. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like a fudge round, man. Like You're looking a at me like a hole. <laughs> got yes. chocolate starfish. Um, I like the fucking. I like a cream pie. <laughs> I like a cream pie in my fudge round. <laughs> oh, God. Dude, speaking of both cream pies and fudge rounds, got to give a shout out to our old friend Joel Camp in the yeah. OCP. Oatmeal cream pie stout. Yeah, did you just which have I it think, or something? Yeah, I did oh, just have it. Because we were talking about it last week. We were yeah. just talking about it last week. So we happened to do like a little work party and uh, got together on the east side. And I was like, oh, shit, they got some OCP. And we were just talking about it. And I yeah. think I may have had it before, but it's been years if I did. Yeah, and it was shit. fucking delicious, Indeed. man. Also, throwback. So the place that we went to, we were just talking about axe throwing and how badass axe yeah. throwing would yes. be, and it was an axe throwing place. Nice. So did you do it? No, we did not. <laughs> God damn it! Fuck? So it was like this. It was actually really is it the bowling alley yeah. where they have lanes where you throw like axes? Oh. Essentially, yeah. You you chuck these. It's like darts, but with axes. Mm-hmm. I think. But uh, it was like this huge place they had. <laughs> it was, was like the best description. <laughs> it's like dark, but with axes. <laughs> <laughs> but they got all these board games, like every board game you could ever imagine. Right. So of course we ended up opting for that. But the table we're at, it's facing oblong, right? And I'm facing directly at a staircase that leads up to the room where the axe throwing is going on, right? So. There's a doorway and it's just above my coworkers' heads, and all I'm seeing is like every couple of seconds an axe of a whip <laughs> across this doorway. And we're talking about like, hey, we want to get going on some board games. And I'm just like trying to casually, you know, insinuate and not up there. I'm like, hey, what are they uh what are they doing up there with those axes? That looks kind of fun. Maybe uh maybe oh, go up man. there and chuck some axes. What are you gonna play sorry instead? Yeah. <laughs> Basically, I'm just like, God damn it. It was fun, it was a good time. How much are, but, uh, like board games are cheaper probably. Well, it's yeah, like I mean, twenty five dollars per person at that place in Kalamazoo. Yeah, really? Just, was this in sorry? Was this in Kalamazoo? Somewhere? No, it was in Detroit. Well, oh, somewhere okay. over yes, in, yes, you yes, know yeah. everything east of yeah. like Jackson is Detroit. Detroit. <laughs> right so on, I right. always got to get. It was good time. That's Love seeing Jordan. everybody. Yo, I ain't even this fucking Snoop Dogg motherfucker over here. <laughs> Yo, I ain't even hit that yet. But I always got to get these rover sitters, right? So I use like this rover app to get dog sitters. And I got this chick that I've been using who's like the smoking hot college volleyball player. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking about how sad it is because it's like, I'm not even in the house where they're at the same time, but it's a good comforting <laughs> feeling knowing that there's an attractive woman in my home because even that's a big step up for this sorry son of a yeah, bitch. I, I was laughing about you're that. Picking up dude. your underwear and shit. Yeah, and it's totally like a combination of Hooters waitress slash the Seinfeld episode where he has the cleaning lady who stops cleaning the house, right? And every time I tip her, she's always like, oh, thanks, sweetie, like Hooters waitress style. Like, your wow. dogs are my favorite. They're the coolest. All those other dogs I said are so lame, but these are awesome. Here's your $100 tip. Uh, I'm just hoping one day I'm going to come home and sleep with her. We'll walk out of the room and she's just going to be like, yeah, so about that dog sitting money, uh-huh. like you didn't do anything. She's like, Well, I was here with the dogs. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Money's on the counter. It's pure side <laughs> you, know, gap for... you know what episode I'm talking yeah, about, do, right? Do, and then yeah. there's a cleaning a guy pimp that comes out. <laughs> oh god damn, that's funny. All right. So listen, guys, we need to talk about UFOs. Yeah. That's one of the big things we want to talk about here. <laughs> when did you start getting into the UFO shit? I didn't know you were fucking like uh kind of into it until we were talking about it all of a sudden one time when we were hanging out yeah so it all i mean i i've always been a skeptic 
you know it you know i obviously shit exists out there i mean it has to so but th- the question is what are these things that we're seeing mm-hmm. w- like not the bullshit cgi shit and the fake shit the shit the government's talking about like what is it yeah like and there's legitimate like videos out there and it all started with me i saw an orb one time okay i'm at a stoplight in grand haven with my girlfriend at the time and we see what looks like a bubble kind of like we're like oh it's a bubble like a kid blew a bubble but it was like about the size of a softball okay and as it approached my car window like it started moving in ways that would suggest that it wasn't a bubble, you know, in straight, straight lines, like uh-huh. against the wind type shit. Mm-hmm. And it didn't look like a bubble anymore. It looked like more like a pearl and I could see through it kind of. Okay. And there's like something inside it kind of looked like almost like a electricity or some kind of plasma inside of it that was dancing yeah. around and it came right up to the window and stopped. And at this time we didn't know it, but the light was green and like cars were honking and shit. Yeah. And, uh, it just went, Doof! what the fuck? Wow. And it just took off. Holy shit. And I mean, we were just like stunned. I bet. And I look over and, I'm like, did you fucking see that? What the fuck was that? And she just like looked at the uh, glove compartment and just shook her head like she was dreaming or something. Whoa. And uh, we were sober as hell, dude. Yeah. And first thing I wonder is like, did the other people see this? You know, like, but they're just like honking yeah. for us to go. <clears throat> and then I started looking into orbs and like, mm-hmm. you know, different cultures what they thought they were and you know like it, fairies or you know just different spirits um and now we're seeing these things in the sky and it sort of piqued my interest and then the government started coming in so this is not that long ago then well the orb was about 10 years ago okay yeah so before that you weren't like really like ufo guy no, like, written not into it or whatever. no. I mean, it's cool to think about. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. You weren't fucking like because I've been for that. That's when I was fucking UFO guy. I was you know pro- probably from the time I was like twelve to thirty. <laughs> you know, I was just, like, obsessed with all that shit. The tinfoil yeah. hat game was strong <laughs> yeah. at that time. So with the with the whole like government d- thing, do you think that's a, like some kind of psyop for Chinese drones or? What's going on here? Like the well, like this new shit with like the the tic tac and all that kind of shit. Yeah, like the video footage that they got. Is stuff. it military technology? I don't think so. I mean, if it is, it's. <laughs> if it is, I don't know like who is doing it because I don't, it's not us. I I don't believe, yeah. and also I feel like, um, I don't really know what the I can't also see what the application of it is exactly. I mean, I guess if you're just testing some new technology or something, but it's like But it's every it's everywhere. Like I mean, and why does it why does it choose where to go and how to be seen and like yeah. I don't understand what it is exactly. So it might be something that we just with our monkey brains will never be able to understand. Yeah. Yeah. And we're just yeah. Why for- don't you think it has to do or couldn't be our government, though, is my question. I mean, oh, well, I guess it could be. Yeah, they're just fucking with our own people, like our pilots, our, you know, naval officers. and. But they clocked. I mean, maybe it's some deep underground that's stuff what, and it's yeah, like a I mean, secret program. Exactly. Hey, it's we're like- going to flash these things up, see what we can do in the context of real fighter pilots. And hey, we've got a little training program today while three guys behind the scenes are checking it out. Uh-huh. And if it okay. is some kind of proprietary thing that they wanted to keep secret, obviously it's tough to do so nowadays with everybody and their fucking brother having a cell phone. So, like, what would you do other than play it off? And like, oh, yeah, we got nothing. We got no idea. You know, yeah, it's better I guess than uh, admitting potentially that we've got right, like, right. 
this crazy technology if we're trying to get a leg up on you know other yeah countries or whatever. i shouldn't put it past our fucking government to be doing shit like that like i don't know i guess, I guess that's where my mind was, was like well why were they just like doing this weird shit to our own people but like obviously there's a history of them been doing that since forever so. yeah right see <laughs> yeah. previous conversation yeah, about mk exactly. ultra about exactly. 20 minutes yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah that was probably a retarded take there but and I, i'm not saying it is that i, know, I was just I know, like I purely know. asking like who the fuck know and either way even if it does us like that's almost as mind blowing as if it's something from another planet. Like if we've done some shit to fucking bend space time, we're starting to get into that realm. Yeah. Like that's pretty goddamn dope, right? Well, people talk about br- the breakaway civilization is is a big conspiracy theory and stuff that there's this other civilization that essentially broke away from ours. That's like you could say like ultra elite Illuminati type folks, and they have all this technology that's totally different and shit like it's Malik Jones really, shit yeah it is, lizard that, it people is shit. 100% and I don't really buy that but they're I don't know you know that's who just knows out man there. I, know. I mean they just released the fusion energy thing true you know it's true. like who knows but it could also be some kind of interdimensional mm-hmm. thing going on mm-hmm. or machine elves <laughs> yeah <laughs> they released them <laughs> uh but I think it's some. I I don't think it's the government. I'd like to think because I want to believe, you know. Yeah. Maybe that's more it than anything. But there's also a lot of me just uh, looking at them and just feeling a certain way that's alien. Mm. You know, it's like you know, as a as a, a human animal or something, mm-hmm. like you can sense when something's not of this. Yes, but again maybe we're just stupid yeah, do you think maybe. it would be cooler and more wild if it were an alien thing or an interdimensional thing it could be both i mean yeah if it was interdimensional i mean it would still be like alien but i get what you mean i think ah man i kind of like the idea of it being of this reality you know like of another planet like a nuts right, and bolts right you know like creatures from another world are sending a drone yeah. here to investigate or something like that what about you man what are your thoughts on that um i think that that is a huge possibility that what you just said they're drones from a different um solar system or something yeah like yeah see i Which almost think it'd be more wild if it were interdimensional it would be. because like I don't know, not to be that guy, but just statistically, there almost has to be other life out there, right? And for as long as the universe has been expanding, presumably yeah. that other life, like there's probably infantile little microbe life, and there's probably shit that's been around for 20 billion years longer than us. That almost seems like a given mathematically. Yeah, exactly. So the interdimensional thing to it me is, is crazy. almost more intriguing, it right? Is, yeah, like, and yeah. whether it's like, pseudo humans from another dimension yeah. or some other or it's us species sending from something another dimension like yeah, yeah. through or the future that's the other one yeah, that's yeah, super yeah. crazy yeah. right is maybe this is like future us yeah. going back in time wow yeah. and the grades are South all, all fucked shit. up yeah, yeah. well it's this and fucking <laughs> rogan always talks about this shit but it's a good point and i like where it's going with it, how like we're basically getting more androgynous we're losing more hair our our muscles are you know we're less muscle more brain like all these things so he's like if you just extrapolate that a million years into the future you know this is probably what a human's gonna look like is gonna be basically a gray alien you know society is on its way out yeah (laughs) all right (laughs) we're not gonna make it um a million years that's for damn sure um in in my opinion well maybe we pull it together Something happens. I think we will, but it, it's that's why the grays are coming back now <laughs> to give us that crucial warning. <laughs> they, that's another theory, uh-huh. right? That so what kind of watching yeah. the nukes? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's your thought process behind us not making it? Do you think it's like a natural disaster? Us fucking ourselves up, us fucking the planet um, up and we're toast or like what's so just looking at that? history and how civilizations rise and fall and how we are living in the most dangerous moment ever. We could destroy the earth easily. All well, it takes is uh, either a computer malfunction that wasn't checked or some espionage shit, you know, for nukes to be launched. So like a Terminator situation. That's what you just described. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the plot of the Terminator. <laughs> Some Skynet shit going uh, right. down. Skynet becomes self-aware and then launches nukes everywhere. Yeah. Furlong is our only hope. Uh, I, I hope nukes. I, I'm not prepared for nukes. 
in any way. In any way. How can you be? Who's prepared for nukes? Well, well, I just say that because I try to be prepared for lots of different situations. Yeah. You know? You're kind of into the prepping thing a little yeah. bit. Yeah. 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 I mean, it turned into prepping. It wasn't prepping at first. Oh, that's how it goes. <laughs> 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 it all starts there. Next thing you know, you're digging a yeah. bomb shelter. Yeah. Your backyard. One day you got a hankering for Campbell's soup. The next day you got fucking walls of that shit just lined up, dude. You should see my cans of water. Um, And I have potassium iodide. I, I Really? Eat, like, yeah, I got nice. weapons. Uh-huh. Not a lot of them, just for me and mine, but... Mm-hmm. <laughs> bazookas grenades no <laughs> yeah. the, the type of people you can get those from i don't want to hang out with those people that fucking uh not to get off topic but the lord of war guy the fucking that they just released yeah. oh yeah trade for britney griner oh man nick cage you know from the movie <laughs> yeah it's not out of control yeah, <laughs> that was a sweet movie quick side it really, really is a fucking it. great movie talk a lot of shit mm-hmm. about nick cage but he killed it in that one jerry leto as well yeah. but yeah that's f- what a fucked up trade uh, that is. i man. didn't like, realize that it was that guy yeah i didn't time. either until yeah. just the other day i heard yeah. people it was talking. probably it's putin's crazy. decision yeah i mean yeah they want i don't even know why they want the guy back like he's just because he's a russian you know like well th- they're probably well, they're, just gonna kill him he's he, that he's, would, he's that a liability would, that would actually be dope if yeah. they do this fucking, uh, <laughs> if they do this trade, but nobody like, will know. We're, we won't uh-huh. know. <laughs> well, don't you think they could be doing it to get him doing exactly what he used to do? Like they're literally in the middle of a war. Occam's so a razor would suggest is, uh, yes. Wildly adept at mm-hmm. trafficking, uh-huh. obtaining and dispersing arms, and you're in the middle of yeah. a war against your. But he's also been in America for how long? Yeah, and how he did it was from all the excess weaponry of the fall of the soviet union so there was these huge stockpiles of weapons that were literally just there was like literally like it's in the movie even like yeah it's like hangers yeah just sent them off to of, third world countries yeah. to fight wars there. and so you could just it was like up for grabs <laughs> you know uh it's the same do you ever see that shit about that those guys who tried to buy that submarine from russia oh look, yeah look dude. that shit up bro it's a doc- documentary on netflix it is so it's awesome. a top it's five top. documentary so you, great it's man. wildly entertaining oh my god but the fucking uh that's why that lord of war guy could he just capitalized on this thing where that there was all this so like i don't and i don't know but i have the idea that that doesn't really exist anymore those like up for grabs stockpiles of weapons i mean that was fucking 40 years right. ago now or whatever Kosovo. maybe <laughs> Baby, I don't know. You know those fucking uh, <laughs> those fucking uh. Oh man, what are they? The club or whatever. The oh, club. the club, <laughs> golden eye, yeah, right? Yeah, those. <laughs> you get the double made. clubs, baby. Yeah. That's where it was at. <laughs> no, the club was one of the inferior guns in that game for sure. People are like pissed though because they they really feel that like the the trade was really like one sided, you know, and that we just we basically just fucking got bent over. They just like literally just like oh here's an American. Uh, we'll pin them with some bullshit fucking yeah, but thing. No matter what did. the trade was, this country is so fucking divided, people would have it. You That's know, true. That's you true, know. too. But it is kind of like, it's just like a basketball player versus this like fucking legit. Right. Like, but it also maybe shows some kind of empathy for yeah you know, but they- I, I agree. And because people were saying like, that's and I was like, you know what? My take is actually more that like, this is fucking America, God damn it. And we don't fuck around with, you know, it's like, that's one of our own and we'll do whatever. Mm-hmm. Take no man left behind. But, and then they're talking about, which I didn't know anything about, of course, but they're talking about what well, is this other, like, uh, they're talking about this Paul Whalen fella. Yeah. He's following that. It's like, there's all these other guys who are also over. So that kind of, who've been over there a long time. Yeah. So that theory that I just said yeah. of like, well, this is America and we're taking care of our own blah, 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 kind of falls to the fucking wayside. So that guy, they other. get into that for a quick sex. Yeah. Like supposedly an ex CIA spy right. guy and that, who got caught yep, over there. And that's one layer like, deeper. It's like, doing okay, the but he was a spy. Of the na- so, yeah. But yeah. again, it was Putin's decision, not Biden's. That's, that's, but I think, yeah, it's it, he's like you get a basketball player. Yeah, I mean, it was just like they they wanted this guy back or whatever. They just so they're like, well, there's some Americans here. Let's just take one and we'll just force them to do whatever we want because it's it is also American. We do have some semblance of moral standards like that, and they're not playing by those rules. And so they're just like, we'll just fucking make a stink out of this charger with some bullshit. Yeah, and fucking rile uh, the American people up, uh-huh. force this fucking. <laughs> 
trade to happen to get Nick Cage back. I bet, I bet I literally, you guys, I feel like fucking Putin probably watched that movie and was like, and it was like, we must get Nick Cage back, you know? Like, and they were like, sir, that's not Nick Cage. That guy definitely has a, a, a James Bond villain vibe. Yeah, 100%. Going on. Dude. It's very secretive. So KGB, real. Yeah. Oh, you mean Putin? Yeah. Oh, he's the ultimate. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I thought yeah, we were yeah. talking Nick Cage. Still. Yeah, either way. Oh, who else? <laughs> either, way. either way. Oh, yeah. Dude. The shadowy figure that is Nick Cage. Putin's wild, man. He says apparently he's got fucking stomach cancer or something. Is that true, though? Uh, we were just doing jokes about him. Fucking, he fell down the stairs and shit his pants. That came out. Putin? Yeah. Putin? It was Putin? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, yeah, he doesn't want that to get out. No. That also could be propaganda. Could be. I mean, I don't know. Even like a fucking like, who was it? Was it Sean Penn went over there and interviewed him like ten yeah, years what's ago up or with something? Sean Penn going <laughs> over. And- He's. It's. I don't know what to think about it because on one side is like this is some actor with his head up his ass on the other side he's kind of crushing it he's actually like doing a lot of shit yeah like he like interviewed the el chapo, chapo yeah shit. yeah he went to ukraine and everything mm-hmm. just like a total badass just yeah it's kind of badass you gotta respect I'll, I'll the balls but also like kind of at the same time to your point who is sean penn to be doing this dude? right right we got, we got like, the guy from it. i am <laughs> sam going yeah, dude. <laughs> mystic river bro? mystic river is one of the best movies ever one made of my favorite <laughs> movies uh-huh. ever dude that, yeah when we were in Kalamazoo, just was, constantly dude. watching that it's movie. so good yeah. man that is a fucking crazy movie Ooh, Tim Robbins crushes it in Mystic River. Yeah. Kevin Bacon, my boy K. Bake. <laughs> I watched it a wind. bunch of times, but now it's like I don't even want to watch that movie. Yeah, it's I tried watching it recently, up, dude. and it's uh, yeah, it's so know. dark. I just can't. <laughs> you know, that's a uh, we were just talking about that Prisoners flick, yeah, which I dude. thought was new. That's your boy. What is it, Dennis? Dennis Villanueva. Villanueva yeah. yeah. I thought it was his new movie, but I hadn't seen it regardless. Yeah. And uh, it was only like 10 minutes in and I was like, oh, this is that guy. I knew who made it. Yeah. And uh, but that movie reminded me of Mystic River. It was like the same level of dark. Yeah, there was a know, lot of similar like, type of overtones. Real gray area. <laughs> There's <laughs> another know? movie directed by uh, the dude, you know, the guy from um, Armageddon and uh, he's dating like Lo- Bay Lo- Lopez. Jennifer oh, Lopez. oh ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. Yeah. He directed a film. It has his brother Casey Affleck in it. Yeah, and uh, it has that vibe too. I can't yeah. remember the name. I know of what Ga- you're talking Gone about. Gone Girl too. or Gone yes. Baby Gone? Gone Baby Gone. Gone. Yeah. Gone I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was awesome. Did Ben Affleck direct that, or did Casey? I Maybe think I'm Casey just Affleck thinking Affleck Casey. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But he does direct stuff. Oh, you got yeah, to tip your cap do. to Ben Affleck. Yeah. Yeah. Argo is a choice. Yeah, for like that was a great best movie. picture. He's nominee. almost Might better as a fucking director. Yeah, than a and he's not. He's a good actor, whatever too. But. I stopped watching after he became Batman. Like, I don't have any interest in watching him on the screen. Oh, really? Yeah, Batman, yeah. him and, yeah, Batfleck might have been a bad call. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that was a good idea or not. That's, that that's the, up for debate. That was the super. I never watched that one. That Me was either. The bat, or Batman and Zack Superman. Zack Snyder right? stuff, yeah, all I that. I couldn't uh, do that. Yeah. That was a little too far down the rabbit hole. I'm just like, I do love Batman. Batman's really the only fucking superhero I'm legitimately into, but like that, I never, I don't think I saw anything with fucking Ben Affleck as Batman. I need that raw dog Batman, baby. I don't want any cross pollinated fucking multiverse bringing Superman. Like, I'm all set on that. Give me that straight uh, Batman, bro. In the new Batman, did you see the new one with fucking. Yeah, Walking. uh, No, not the Joker. Oh. The new Batman with. uh, Robert Pattinson. Yeah, the Pattinson. No, uh, I haven't yet. Twilight. People, I keep getting mixed reviews and I. I, I loved it. Aside, I loved it. Time, if you like, yeah. I mean, if you dig Batman, definitely. Okay, it. cool. Uh, but I was gonna say to you, um, the villain—I I don't know what you'd call it—but the guy who plays the Riddler is the guy in that Prisoners movie. Yeah, and he's basically like the, almost kind of the same character. In some Paul ways. Like, Dano. He's yeah, right? he's yeah. and he's got those big gold rim glasses. And I was thinking that this was a new movie. So I was like, he's just doing the Riddler. <laughs> gonna, because it's all about like, you got a, the maze and all this shit. It's like the puzzles. And yeah, he's wearing yeah. the glasses and being all fucking. I was just like, this guy's just doing the same shtick. Yeah. <laughs> Cannot preach prisoner. Have you seen prisoners by chance? Can't That's preach not this the movie one, highly enough. The one where it's like older right there's a because there's another movie with like hugh hugh yeah yeah hugh, that's it it's, it's hugh jackman, jackman and jake jake Gyllenhaal. Gyllenhaal. i've seen that one yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and that's their, their great daughters flick, get man. kidnapped or something mm-hmm. yeah fuck those dudes up. it's a dark movie yeah, huge yeah. fan of <laughs> the 
cast in that man. Dino kills it. Yeah, or Dano. He was awesome in. He's uh, great. There will be blood. He mm-hmm. trying to him yeah. in that. He's great. Jake Gyllenhaal is my boy. That's my guy, dude. Yeah, preposterously good there. looking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what the fuck were we talking about? Well, we were talking about fucking UFOs and shit. We yeah, we definitely hopped off that. But I can yeah. tell you, I I know, like I sort of mentioned this. I and this is the weirdest thing. And I have to be careful here, you know, just sort of talking about it because the the person is just somebody I can't talk about for um, I work in mental health, so I just can't talk about her. Mm -hmm. Um, And so but she has video recorded shit over her house, you know, and I look at it and it's like, yep, that's not fake. And they keep coming back. Like at 3 a.m. in the morning. <clears throat> wow. And so you brought this video. I brought two of them, yeah. Okay. And I got I got one of them pulled up, and we're going to watch it. So we'll watch it, and then we'll uh, we'll talk about it while we're watching it a little bit here. But then I'm going to cut it into the show, but I, we can't play her. Uh, she is speaking as she's videotaping it. Yeah, she thinks they're like angels or something yeah she thinks that she can control them with like she can think about a place in the sky and send it to there right so we're gonna watch it with her talking but unfortunately we can't play that uh in order to protect her and stuff so all right or him (laughs) (laughs) or they all right you guys ready to fucking let's see if i can get this pulled up here let's do it So she knows she's dating it, time stamping it. Right. ESP each other. Oh, so it's changing colors. Yep. Okay, so this thing is like changing colors. It looks like it got bigger too, yeah. right? She's also zooming in, I think. I think that's all. The phone oh, okay. zooming in and out, I okay. think, too. No. I don't know, man. It no, looks like it's, it's definitely because changed. I've seen other videos of the same type of UAP online, and it it expands and contracts. And you can tell it's not the camera. It actually shows itself larger. Yeah, whatever it is does not appear to be a camera thing. It's flickering back and forth between a bunch of different colors. Like, yep. It's like a ring. So can you hear that? Like, is that part? I think that's her house or something. Okay. Yeah, that could be anything. That's the air conditioner. Never mind. Yeah, pretty much. It's like artifacting in the microphone, like the sound. She's saying they're all over, but there's only one. No, she catches a few of them, I think. So you'll see them in... Yep, look. Okay, there's like little flickers coming in and out. It's like... Yep. It's like strobing. She keeps saying they're silent. So I can't tell because the phone keeps going dark. Are there multiple or is the thing moving quickly or is that from the phone position changing? I think it's like one and it's strobing on and off. Like see how it'll be up there and then it was like way down in the corner one time. It's moving as it strobes. Also, 
the smallest movement That's what in your I'm phone, wondering. Huh? Yeah, if it's that. She's saying it's low, it's silent. So when was this taken again? I know she kind of said right at the beginning. Uh, in the fall. Okay. So it's like pulsing blue, then going back to white. Yeah, and there's better video of it. it you can see it a lot better. It's crazy. Do you want to switch to the other video? Yeah, go to the, the one that was is seven minutes or whatever. I should have named him like this. But, oh, yep. Yeah, like, when it gets bigger, stop it. It might be the other video. All right. All right, we're going to switch to the other video here. Uh, I have to kind of do a little editing through here. Was that it? I think that was the one we just caught, wasn't it? They look similar at first. Did she introduce it like that, August? Something on the first one? Yeah. One is different, though. I think that's the one we were watching. One is six something, the other one is seven something. Yeah. All right, this is yeah, a, this a different, different video. All right, we got the second video queued up here. Her dog's barking in the background. Her a dog's barking. You can hear cars and stuff going on in the background. So it keeps going from like this little totally filled in a white dot to like kind of expanding like with a halo around it and it looks bigger and then the middle gets more translucent sort of if yeah, that makes it's sense. It's like going from a donut hole to a donut. Yeah, she says like well put my friend. <laughs> it has to like get used to her. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. But it eventually starts showing itself more. What the fuck? There's like kind of some shit articulating in the center yeah. of it a little bit. Yeah, there's like, so, there is something in the center. And it's, it appears to be like lights rotating too. She said, if I go to the country and look towards the city, I can see it. It looks like it's rotating and or the lights on it at least are kind of rotating in that manner. Yeah, and I think it's lower than what it looks like. She's saying it's like above the tree line. Wow. Damn. I wish there was something else for reference in the footage. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it's tough to get an idea like scale and how far away and whatnot. all right i'm gonna fast forward it a little bit here there's a there's a part in one of these where it just gets big like a kind of like a plate and it does have that sort of ring around it damn that's out of control it's I don't pretty know. wild man hard to tell what it is I don't like know. it's I don't know you know because there's that. no frame of reference right like it's pitch black out and you see this thing but mm -hmm. it definitely looks pretty wild if it's an act you know well she has more uh but i don't have them yeah so but she does have one where you can see that there's more than just one like you can see that she's in her backyard and there's actually more than one up there. And so she, how often is she saying that she's seen? She in, in in one of the videos she says they come like every night at three a.m. Damn. Weird. And she, but she's saying she calls them angels or something. Yeah, she thinks she's. But she also talks to frogs in her pond. But, uh, I mean, but here's the thing, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's 
something's going on there. Yeah. She's, she's not like just like trying to lie about it or anything like right. that. I just, yeah. But if you look up pulsating orbs, UAPs in the sky, it's you'll see these better. Yeah. It's a, it, it's a type. Uh-huh. And this person has no ability to fake this, you would say. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. She has services. Yeah. Huh. That's fucking Pretty up, wild, What do you man. think? What do you think it is? I will never say definitively, right? Because, of course. Because, you but... know, like somebody doctoring something, is it a real thing? I mean, it certainly looks to be something kind of crazy. I mean, it doesn't seem like, it's certainly not like an airplane or anything like that. No. Like, it's nothing like that. What what could it be that would make that? I don't know. Man. I can't think of anything. Can't, like, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, it's not any kind of weird reflection. It does. You know, it's certainly not yeah. like some kind of blinking aircraft type thing. Mm-hmm. It looks like it's way too dark out. You know, just for it to be like some random reflection of something off of something else. It's pretty fucked up. And the way that know. it was all those colors that were just like flashing a yeah. strange. Like every color of the rainbow. Yeah. Kind of too, like just going through all the colors. But they didn't look like LEDs or anything like that. Yeah. You know, just, it, I don't know. Fuck right up. Weird, man. I'm Fuck jealous. Now I want to see something. I'm I know. equally I terrified and excited yeah, to hopefully yeah. see something someday. But it's pretty crazy, man. I don't know think about that, dude. That's good shit. I wish I Oof. had evidence of the orb I saw. Cause, well, of course, yeah. yeah. Ball lightning. That's Somebody said that, <laughs> and I, I, I don't think we've ever caught it on camera, have we? Ball lightning? Yeah. We have? Well, kind of. It's, it's, yes, but it's, it's never great, you know? Mm. But, and it's different, too. Ball lightning's fucking weird. But um, ball lightning wouldn't go, like, away in the opposite direction, like, instantaneously do shit like that but ball lightning will go through walls and shit yeah i've heard about really that. just <laughs> stories from Jesus people Christ. Yeah. Yeah. what exactly causes slash what is i don't think we know. nobody knows it's it's Dang. a huge mystery it's a it's some sort of collected electrical charge in the air that's like a lightning and it lasts usually for like about 30 seconds wow. and it, it'll flow it, it can be low or high and it can go yeah like a guy reported it like came right through his fucking picture window into his house jesus Shit. christ man. <laughs> it's fucking weird dude That's out of control yeah. yeah that would be horrifying i heard about mm-hmm. a guy like he said it came out of his tv and it just like freaked him out like and it came out of his tv it, yeah maybe it came that, through the wall through the tv right I don't know. that's a whole other <laughs> level of fucked up dude i don't yeah. know about that yeah, right. <laughs> that's a pulse <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if that's that seems to me to be something more. maybe that's where they come thing. from is tvs man it could be i don't know yeah uh, but there's there's mysteries out there no doubt man no doubt <laughs> Talking about Will Smith. <laughs> 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 Emancipated. <laughs> it looks just fucking terrible. Have either of you guys seen that? No, is it even out? I don't know, man. Yeah. They're hyping it up pretty good right now. <laughs> it's like an Apple flick, I think. Is it like 12 Years a Slave, kind of? It's like got to be, yeah. Imagine, Shit like yeah. that, dude. It's uh-huh. even worse. <laughs> yeah. But is it like Civil War era? It it's got like, it. Yeah, maybe? I think okay. so. Yeah, yeah. They're like, all right, get Will Smith in there. <laughs> it's probably the sweetest movie in the world. <laughs> probably. Yeah. I won't be watching it. <laughs> I feel like Will Smith's actually kind of terrible. I don't know. He's another DiCaprio to me. Like, I love everything yeah. he's in, but it's like, eh, he kind of is he not the greatest just, in the world. Yeah, he's always just himself. Getting those yeah. money rolls. <laughs> And Ali, I will say, for as much acclaim as that guy, I thought Ali stunk. I never I'm even saw it. Thinking Ali. Yeah. What's the best Will Smith movie? It's got to be Independence Day, right? Independence Day, baby, yeah. without question. I really like I Am Legend, too. They're it's making a new one, I yeah. think. They're sequeling yeah. it up. With Will Smith? Yeah. Damn, dude. Yeah. There's an alternate ending in the last one. I, there are two endings. Oh. I don't remember what the alternate was, though. I don't even remember what the ending was of there. <laughs> <laughs> 
I just remember the zombies were kind of cool. Yeah. Do you ever watch that stinker? He did one with his kid when he was trying to get his kid off. Is that yeah. Oh, yeah. Pursuit Earth? of Happiness. That, oh, well, there's no, they're yeah, all yeah. in Pursuit all, of Happiness, too. All the above, yeah. Pursuit of Happiness, I actually thought was all right. It was that a pretty was pretty decent good. flick. It was yeah. a, little, a little heartwarming, a little cheesy, but it was pretty yeah. good. And in today's day, you know, we really need some heartwarming, you know, some, <laughs> something, <laughs> something to warm the hearts. Right. This right. Christmas season. <laughs> yeah. Warm the hearts and inform the mind. Uh, you know? and tickle the balls. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys feel the Christmas spirit at all? I feel it deep, deep inside. <laughs> <laughs> I got your sack of goodies right here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's fucking hear what's going on in the world here, all right? All right let's get all into right, it. All right, here we go. The Dangerville Podcast presents News of the World. All right. All right. So we got some good news and bad news this week. The good news is that I'm actually coherent, unlike last <laughs> week where Buddy brought in this blunt that was rolled in wax and keef, and I was out of vision. <laughs> I was struggling to formulate a sentence. Actually, I had some banger material, but wasn't able to execute. This <laughs> week, bring him in. This week, I'm again. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally thinking about that. I swear to God, I was just gonna run I back even and not say a word about it. Just bring them all Is this back. The but... Same joke. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're gonna get into this here. All right, ready to roll. So, suspect shot worker at Amazon Hub, then is shot dead by another employee. Oh. Okay. So this dude went and shot some Amazon worker, another worker who happened to be carrying a gun off to the original shooter. So pretty wild. Two guys are dead. Uh, Amazon is in the process of shipping both bodies back to the morgue to perform full <laughs> autopsies, though advised there could be a longer than normal lead time due to increased demand during the holiday season. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, they were able to guarantee uh, next day delivery if the morgue signs up for Amazon Prime for just fourteen ninety nine a month. So good news there. Indeed. Yeah. All right. That's a quick wild. hitter. We're gonna move That's right wild. along here. Two police officers killed after thirty minute talk with a woman. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Just just that. That's right? funny. <laughs> uh, however, it was not the woman whose name was Amy Anderson that shot them. For 29 minutes, they patiently listened to Amy going on about how her friend Becky bought the same shoes that she had already bought like a week before that, but then Becky totally pretended that she didn't know that Amy had already gotten the shoes before her, posted about it on Instagram like a total bitch, and acted like she got them first, and then her Christ. other friend Carly saw Amy wearing the shoes after she already saw Becky's post on the gram. <laughs> And ended up doing a TikTok about how Amy was copying <sighs> Becky, which is a total Karen move and super <laughs> sus, even though Amy like definitely found them first <laughs> and wouldn't ever copy <sighs> Becky because Becky's style is like so beat. And at minute 30 of the story, the two Ooh. brave officers knew they were left with but one way out of the dire situation and tragically took their own lives. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Good. man. <laughs> I was just going to go wow. with uh, cause of death, boredom, which uh, would have saved us all some time in retrospect. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. <sighs> all right. All right. <laughs> Got, see, that one wouldn't have been possible last week, for better or for worse. I'm not know. sure it was possible this week. <laughs> That's golden. You know it, Jerry. Pretty, pretty, pretty. A little courtesy Larry David sounder there. Much appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving right along here. Two for two so far, if I do say so myself. Customer shoots St. Louis KFC employee <laughs> over no corn. A KFC employee <laughs> in St. Louis has been hospitalized after a customer shot him because he was upset that the restaurant ran out of corn. Wow. Upon his arrest, an indignant Nelly shouted to the man, Bitch, you got off easy. You ain't even want to know what I would have done and you'd rob, run out of that. <laughs> Extra crispy chicken around her. Okay. Not very good. That, yeah. was that, what was, was that, that sounds Saint Louis just too real. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a St. Louis <laughs> joke, yeah. Mm. In a related what? story, an irate Brandon Frazier <laughs> shot up an entire KFC staff for even offering him a vegetable <laughs> with the side of his number five. Yeah. That's more like it. <laughs> was that Brandon Frazier? Was that what he said? <laughs> oh, just Brandon Frazier, right? Oh. Yeah. 
Thank you, man. It said Brandon. It said, it's yeah. his brother, his brother <laughs> Brandon <laughs> Frazier. In retrospect, you probably should have uh, shoehorned a Jonathan Davis joke in there somewhere. Ooh. I'm back to the well on that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Some ooh right. <laughs> or whatever. That's disturbing. That's, yeah. That's the wrong, Close terrible enough. 90s band. <laughs> Disappointing fieldy <laughs> monkey in the boys right now, dude. All right. Jesus. So fire in Golf's Moscow Mall. A mm. massive fire gutted a shopping mall on Moscow's eastern outskirts on Monday, the second such blaze in four days, and a guard was hospitalized after inhaling toxic fumes. The toxic fumes in question, however, were not from the fire, but rather the standard preparation of the lackluster General Tso's chicken <laughs> at Panda Express. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible joke, but frankly, it's the one that the people demanded, goddammit. Uh, kidding aside, fire marshals have since determined that the blaze is due to the red-hot holiday deals at JCPenney's. So, so. <laughs> I like yes. that it, it had mascot in it. That was pretty cool. Dude, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this one's just terrible, and it should have been the easiest one in the world. I couldn't crack it, but I also couldn't pass up on this joke for obvious reasons. German police seek help in solving bull sperm heist. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Authorities say about... Stick with, me, or stick with me on this one here. Hang with me here, all right? So authorities say about 60 containers of bull sperm were stolen from a farm mm. in the town of Olfen late Monday night, and currently they have no suspects. This is a rare instance where cracking the case leads to an even stickier situation. Oh, my God. Yes, wow. yes, wow. baby. Drink it in a little wow. bit. Let it waft over you, that Jesus. glorious, glorious word. <laughs> Slow news week this week, boys. <laughs> Slow news week this week. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we'll end on this one. This is not going great so far. Let's wrap this up. U.S. charges eight in social media pump and dump stock scheme. <laughs> the Justice Department and SEC said that from the early 2020 to around April of this year, the men who had combined uh, a combined following of over 1.5 million on Twitter ran a pump and dump scheme encouraging their followers to buy stocks thereby inflating the price and then selling off their own shares shortly thereafter once the stock price is boosted yeah. as this bullshit stock splash yeah, yeah. out on it. Yeah. Conversely, the Justice Department, SEC, and men worldwide continue to applaud actor Leonardo DiCaprio for the increasingly impressive series of pump and dump schemes he's continued <laughs> to run on yeah. smoking hot 25-year-old models <laughs> for <laughs> nearly three decades. Indeed. <laughs> Tip of the cap to you, Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. No, no, People Leo. need to leave Leo alone, man. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Let, let Leo do what his, <laughs> Leo's got to do, man. I was thinking it was a pump and dump scheme. It was something that had to do with those jars of bull sperm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Could have been a crucial callback there. Time was lacking this week. All right, boys. Yeah. That's all we got. All right. Nice job, man. Short nice and job. sweet. Short and sweet. <laughs> I had nothing. <laughs> As now splash ditch up. <laughs> <laughs> Keep saying that. We got to get some. Uh, we can, where are your boys at for the sports? Yeah, that was all talk. That was all talk. Those guys got known. Don't know the sheer level of commitment it takes to come in with <laughs> terrible, terrible material every week. Hey, where's that clove at, man? Uh, where did? Is it not in there? I don't. Go to oh, I didn't know. Doubt. If in doubt, go to Frog's, go to Frog's Lot. He right will on. guide you right on on your journey. Ribbit. He says, take this. It's dangerous out there. Turn in the frogs, gay! <laughs> <laughs> Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah. We don't need to talk. Well, we can talk, we can talk about talk about Alex yeah. Jones. Yeah. I, I used to uh, listen to a lot of Alex, Alex Jones. Alex Jones was cool back in the day, dude. Yeah, man. Did you ever see the movie Waking Life? Oh, yeah. He had a cameo. Yeah, there. he come because he's from Austin or, mm -hmm. or whatever, from Texas, I guess. Yeah. But uh, even like then, it was like, oh, that's that fucking crazy guy. You know, like, yeah. Face keeps getting redder and redder. <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch that fucking movie again, dude. That guy's endlessly entertaining to listen to. Yeah. The Kanye shit. I mean, that's what, you know, it, everything was going on right at the same time. He got caught.
caught with that fucking billion dollar lawsuit. Yeah, and... dude. <laughs> One billion dollar payment, dude. That yeah. is absurd, man. Really <laughs> sticking to him on that. Jesus Christ. It's a lot of fucking vitamins and male ma- vitality uh, pills. Yeah. <laughs> Which is basically really all he does, right? It just sells that fucking shit. Yeah. Yeah. I've, l- I've never actually watched his show ever. Yeah, I just used to listen to him on the radio. Yeah. I've seen clips of his show, but. Yeah. It's still on, isn't it? I thought he... Yeah, no, yeah, he's okay. still doing... That's what I'm saying. Like, Kanye was just on and all that shit. He's, it's, it's all, like, still independent Info now. Wars or, okay. Yeah, it's, I think he's just got his own studio and his own websites and he's just fucking throwing it down. <laughs> just, just going... <laughs> Seems like he's really going to need to uh, ramp up the content efforts here. What with the billion-dollar uh, tab he's got to pay for and whatnot at this point? I think people just support him. I think people just it. give him money, probably. I see so many cars even still with InfoWars stickers right. on them and shit. Like, right. And I'm, I'm sure you get those when you make a donation, you know? Right, right. So We got to donate. We got to get some InfoWars stickers. <laughs> so we got to get them up in the new, uh, the new studio. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. So we might as well just fucking drop the... <laughs> the it's kind of... The news is kind of out anyway, but uh, it's big story is we're moving... We're moving yes, spots, sir. so you got a, a choice spot for a studio in there. Yeah, yeah, that's basically the whole the whole deal. So we're the buzz on the internet's be... been palpable. Yeah, <laughs> been yeah blown yeah. up with messages, but... rumors. <laughs> are they true? Yeah. Are they not true? Is the Dangerville podcast moving yeah. studios? They're keeping the pretty close to my chest, playing it pretty close here. But uh, yeah, it's, it's sign on the dotted line. Indeed. So, yeah, I'm moving. I'm gonna have the fucking whole new spot it's gonna be a way badder ass uh podcast set up pretty exciting pretty yeah, exciting gonna, haven't seen it it's gonna be huge getting roped into moving it's on sunday <laughs> so we'll be catching it then <laughs> should be good the should less i good. have to spend on movers the more i can spend on bullshit no, I'm just breaking your balls, man. It'd be good stuff speaking of internet and buzz so as we mentioned last week, Dangerville up on Twitter now, officially yeah. par- or, uh, part of the Twitterverse. Click yeah, plug. right at the perfect time too. With the burning. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna ask. Like, I know. <laughs> yeah. we're really on top. You know, we're getting into podcasting just at the right time. Yeah. Really getting into Twitter right at the right time. <laughs> just when everything's fucking <laughs> when the market's so saturated, <laughs> so they can't possibly <laughs> absorb another drop. We are the fucking. <laughs> Let's get up on this for sure. Breaking the, every camel's back. <laughs> Dude, just like we can't handle another podcast, we can't handle more idiots on Twitter. <laughs> Nothing to say to us. So what's uh, what's going on? You know, and we're coming with this fucking prime UFO content. Right? <laughs> but got to hit it up. So it's uh, what the hell is the name? That probably would have been a good thing to remember before this. Uh, uh, no, it's, Dangerville, uh, Dangerville Podcast, Pod, right? and then uh, at Dangerville Pod. At Dangerville Pod. On the but Twitter I've been verse. blowing this up for the last week, bro. I'm tweeting up a storm. Right. Maybe. Not, I haven't even seen it. <laughs> I'm tweeting at Mount Westmore. I'm tweeting nice, at Snoop. I'm tweeting nice, at Maynard, nice. dude. No responses so no. far. I've never hopped into the <laughs> Twitterverse. I never fucked with it personally. But yeah, they're basically. I, I've tried it like once. Every, I've tried. I've set up like two accounts, and every time it lasted like an hour, and I was just like, no. no. <laughs> Sam Harris. Sam Harris just quit Twitter. You know, Sam Did Harris. He? Yeah, yeah, he's quit. He's just done. Big Sam Everybody Harris. is, dude. Fucking tons of people are getting off it. It's just like it's definitely a fucking sinking Bullshit. ship you know? everybody's getting up on their high horse going yeah. anti they'll be back right now. I know. they'll be I know. back on in fucking two weeks dude yeah. it's too easy of a way i mean the lift we personally have seen in this podcast mm-hmm. what's going on twitter has been astronomical in just a week's time i did tweet at our boy elon uh seeing what's up with that verified check mark i was like we officially have Indeed. one follower now we are up to one follower for the mm-hmm. dangerville twitter podcast and it's me We've got tens <laughs> of loyal fans across the globe. So I was like, Elon, you gotta get uh gotta get some of your finest people in the game up on Dude. that blue check mark, bro. That'd be much appreciated. Aren't there like a few different check marks now or I don't even know. A few different yeah. I know there's a blue check mark on Facebook now too, all of a sudden. It's like okay. Yeah. Oh, that's lame, dude. Riding those Twitter coattails. Well, Facebook's yeah. like asking me to try try to make money for them, basically. Yeah, well that's what they do. Yeah. So. And I'm just like why this motherfucker's over here playing footsie with me right now. You see this? It's like, what the fuck, dude? Because I got that. Got r- a couple drinks in me. Uh, you know, getting a little antsy in the pants. You're getting a little handsy over here. What are you going to do? 
because <laughs> I created that writers group on Facebook yeah, yeah. and uh, accidentally made a page first. And right. the page, there's all these like financial, you know, things you could do, like like sponsoring it, like shit, like advertising it. You mean or like? No, they basically, and they uh, they're starting to do it in groups too. From my understanding, yeah, don't quote me. That they will pay you based on activity on your on your in your group. Oh, okay, I don't hate that. You know, that's I mean that's just. Uh, uh, profit sharing that's basically the same thing that YouTube does or that when you get so big they start paying you for content, yeah I say so. if you're sitting there monitoring like hundreds of thousands of exactly yeah 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 yeah. it's like a full time job basically. yeah yeah so what's up with that group you should talk a little bit about that man what's uh what's the story with the group I actually joined I am now a member so a little shout out come my I way too, much appreciated I? getting some love yeah you're in sure. there too yeah, yeah it's so. just some little it feels like a coffee house kind of there's people write words and i want to, i'm trying to make it a space where it's like they can feel comfortable you know so i don't this lady the other day said like shit i was shitting on everybody's stuff in there <laughs> i got on there's like this sucks oh no <laughs> suck at writing no but this is how i found out everybody this is how i found out about the money thing the financial incentives is because she's like well i run a group of twenty thousand in michigan or it's like based on michigan the group is based on michigan yeah and she's like i could bring a bunch of people over there and like facebook you know you can get money from it i'm just like oh. but it's a coffee house i'm not coffee trying to build get paid too i so. know but no yeah. no 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 they're, they're, i don't want to have that, that be an element shedder, man. yeah we're, dude, but we're writing you know like it's it's not like ah uh, writers gotta get paid i don't know man all eyeballs get at the, the end of I the know. day extra i don't exposure. want people thinking i'm making money off Why that not? Shit. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, would post a picture of myself in uh, a t-shirt with dollar bill signs uh, on that motherfucker. I'm banking. Honestly, I just fucking hate money. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. Yeah, I, you can give me some. I'm happy to take mm, it off your hands. I got what I need, and you. that's all I got. I would hate. <laughs> I hate it, but if uh, somebody was to give me a whole lot of it, I wouldn't say no. Right, but what? <laughs> it's something comes from nothing. Like, I mean, something in your life has to be compromised, right? Like, um, you start stretching the definitions of moral, like your moral standards. Yeah. If you know, money becomes the center point. Oh, that's true. That's yeah. true. Absolutely yeah, yeah. true. Yeah. But conversely, you can also have a bunch of money and not let it become the center point. It's what you, you know, like if you yeah. don't let it change you, it's just another fucking. But doesn't it yeah. kind of change everybody? You know, if I mean, you maybe get rich, to a degree, but it just depends on how you look at it. Like if you define yourself by your fucking paycheck and I've yeah. got this job and make so right, much right, money, right. you know, that's one thing. But yeah, you could even actually use like Joe Rogan as an example of that. Yeah. I mean, like for the most part, he's like, even all his friends are like, you're the exact same guy. He yeah. Just, you like, know, like, <laughs> of course, if you turn into some huge douchebag and mm -hmm. think you're, you know, elevated above everybody else because of the zeros in your bank account, that's a little bit different. But I mean, inherently, it's just. Is it easy to change a person? Probably. If you got like a weak constitution, dude. If you're a fucking <laughs> moral ass motherfucker who knows what's up and is having to get fat paid in the process, I don't see anything wrong with that necessarily. I, it, the only, yeah, yeah. I mean, I understand that, but there's an aggression that comes to making money. Yeah. That I don't want on my hands. Yeah, yeah. When it's like your whole primary objective is yeah. to just make money and it's not like I'm, I want to do a sweet thing and the money will come yeah. after that. Life is about living, you know, doing what makes you feel good on the daily, you know, and having meaning. And I just think money takes that away from people sometimes, you know, like they lose it, especially if they get it from being poor or get it from being like middle class, like rich people are rich people and they're born into it. A lot of them. So yeah. they, they're already different, you know, how money changes people and how money, uh huh. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, but we're like a different kind of different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose it could. Do, I mean, I think you're right. I think it could just. It kind of depends on the person. It can go either way. Like if you yeah. were to get, if you were to get fat paid, like because there are a lot of like. It's almost like there's a certain threshold too when you get into that like preposterous amounts of money, like the the fucking ultra rich billionaire well, types. You, you know? can only. I mean. These guys are depressed as fuck, dude. Like, because they go everywhere. Like, life of 
luxury and just have jets and there's no inherent risk and there's you know no inherent adventure real adventure you know they're just creating artificial sort of vacations and eventually the beautiful women you know are just aren't enough anymore uh-huh. and they they don't know what they can't find love and like, they got to go to hostel and start murdering <laughs> <laughs> But, like, if you think of a guy like fucking Bezos, right? I mean, like, he he didn't come from nothing by any means. But, like, I mean, he wasn't the fucking billionaire that he is now. And so, I mean, like, there was a lot of risk and adventure in building all that from the get-go, you know? And also, he I doesn't mean, seem too true. Impressed, going to know? space feels fairly adventurous, you know? Yeah, he got to do that true. with those big he stacks did do that. of money. Yeah. So. He's taking fucking a bunch of testosterone and shit. Oh, yeah. Dude, he's all, all jacked. jacked. No. <laughs> Knee deep in that TRT, just get yeah. that His uh, divorce and his wife, or whatever, they got divorced or whatever. Well, that's and a like, big old paycheck, dude. What was it? Half a billion or something? Yeah. A couple billion or something. 40 absurd, billion dude. or Oof, something, Jesus. dude. Uh, so, I don't know. I think it's just uh, kind of an individual. It's probably not best to generalize, you know? It's probably an no, individual. I'm, I'm speaking specifically from a writer's group on Facebook trying to incentivize yeah that me on the other um, hand i'm trying to make as much money as possible <laughs> <make it. laughs> yeah, right. which is zero you know but yeah. trying to sell out like a motherfucker uh, <laughs> no shame in the game so uh <laughs> gotta, eat, wants gotta to donate eat. to the yeah, yeah. yeah, podcast it's at twitter pod or whatever what is it <laughs> oh, sorry, he hasn't pod. eaten in four days <laughs> dangerville podcast <laughs> at dangerville pod at danger we at need dangerville to set up a patreon pod. yeah, yeah that's right. Right. <laughs> i'm all about shameless shilling dude just hand out head out head in hand i don't give a fuck son no morals to curl dude pay we did it, get some free us, booze like. by the way shout out yeah, to shane, shout out shane. We're, we're drinking oh, I'm, I'm out right now but getting yeah. back up on that e40 uh-huh. riding that uh e40 cognac train once again this week it's just good man it goes yeah. down smooth hell yeah man so what else is fucking going on in your life dude that's that's pretty cool you still you said you're not really like fucking with music much anymore i mean you still like writing songs and shit or? yeah i mean <laughs> It's ridiculous, dude. I just have so many different interests. Yeah, me too. And uh, so, as it is now, like I've been working on an album for like a long time. Yeah, a long. And if I ever release it, it'll be like hopefully really, really good because it's a my whole fucking life. Yeah. Um, just of working on these particular songs. You work on it too long, though. It's not the move. I'm gonna release it. With, I'm gonna release it with the book. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah i was thinking about it something that like would that. be dope actually nice. yeah you should do that dude does the music tie into the book yeah or what's yeah, the like concept combined okay. sort of thing so yeah. what's the concept like what's the uh the lowdown in this whole thing well i'm just, it's not time to talk about that no right good no, uh, no. okay yeah, you're not gonna bring that sneak peek dude. <laughs> <laughs> i mean i did a little bit tonight <laughs> We'll get okay. some of our finest investigative mm-hmm. reporters out of the case. <laughs> Danger has got the best reporters in the game. Yeah, if you want to put it out, you got to finish it and put it out. It's tough. When you get one shit sits too long, like, oh, then you're not working. <laughs> then you're like, you're not the same person you were when True. you started it and shit. Like, I've, well, I've I, gone down God. these roads. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's tough. It's hard to get it. Uh, finish something and put it out and you end up making chinese democracy dude I, I've, I've, made, I've made a few chinese democracies in my day and it's it's not the move the best music you make is usually done fast like fast and finished and you know mm-hmm. like yeah I, pl- I i started playing strictly acoustic like probably 11 12 years ago so it's like i mean not 11 12 years ago more like six or six i don't know I can't keep track of time. <laughs> but playing acoustic guitar for a long time. Yeah. And uh, I was playing it so much that I like injured my arm. Oh. Yeah. So you got like tinnitus. You got to stretch, folks. Is it like that tinnitus, like here? Well, tinnitus is in the tinnitus ears. of no, the arm. Fuck. The elusive tinnitus. Ten- fuck. Tendonitis. Tendonitis. <laughs> Goddamn. Come on. <clears throat> tendonitis. <laughs> yeah. It's some of that. It's some carpal tunnel. And that's the one. Yeah. 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 God damn it. Fuckers. <laughs> but I also fell off a longboard on that wrist and just like kind of let it heal. Yeah, that'll get you. Yeah. Lost about a half an inch of range of motion. Yeah. My brother fucked his wrist up, I think, building, and he could, like, couldn't play the drums the same anymore. Hmm. 
Yeah, that shit will get you. Oh, I could still yeah. play, but. Yeah, mine's just like chronic masturbation. <laughs> just wrecks your arms. Dude, I can barely play guitar anymore. I'm, crippled. You, I'm crippled. One <laughs> crippled arthritic <laughs> hand. I do hardly play the guitar anymore. Um, I don't know. It's just I'm more interested in like production and shit, but like. Mm -hmm. So like when I do pick up a guitar and I like my chops are bad, but I'm still pretty up on singing and uh, I've been playing a lot of the drums lately too. So it kind of comes in, it always goes in like waves for me, like one thing, then the next thing, then right. the next thing. Yeah. yeah, I I I don't trust my singing these days, but I can still play a guitar. Yeah, yeah. But I I spent all these this money on like vocal lessons, mm -hmm. like during the pandemic. Yeah, and uh, learned a lot. Yeah. Voice lessons uh, are fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did yeah. like close to four years. Oh, wow. A little, nice. break, little break in between there when I wasn't doing them for a minute. But yeah, cool. this opera dude over here. So we were like doing them in churches and shit. Like it's really? em empty. Because like oh. a lot of these guys just kind of like they're in the community and they just kind of like find these spots to do their lessons in. You know, they like rent oh, a space yeah. or whatever. Like, you know, like, yeah, you can do them here. You know, I'm sure they've got to, you know, throw the part of their what they're making to them or something but so it'd just be like weird spot we ended up in like a middle school auditorium one time and shit but you're just in these like big empty rooms that's cool. you know good acoustics yeah that's what i'm saying mm -hmm. it was just kind of fun to like just stand there like sing in these big open rooms with nobody around right. do, <laughs> do some um like religious chanting and shit i wish man i wish i could have got <laughs> into some of that kind of shit but like i don't know that he knew how to do that shit either but that'd be fucking fun, and they're man. singing icaros and shit <laughs> uh -huh. we did some like kind of like opera shit and then we'd do like uh like i don't know pop songs and shit too so it was it was just kind of whatever yeah it's fun man it's just good to fucking learn on any new skill you know yes i think that's a big problem with the world is people aren't learning like yeah things they, they quit learning yeah at a certain point it's too hard yeah i for one am utterly talentless <laughs> got nothing to do no tangible skills whatsoever i should probably get on that yeah but skills are uh, talent and skills aren't the same thing i'm just breaking know. i know i know you're not at all so does talent, my black does talent imply that you're born with it i think so yeah because i've heard both it like i don't know like, yeah, that's to me that's talent and then like you got to you got to work on your mm -hmm. talents, you know. Right. Cuz talent can only get you like so far or like people like people can you can 100% outwork talent. Like if you if I was talented at something and could do it really easy and I just didn't work on it and you worked on it every single day well, after 10 years, the person who worked on it's going to be way better than the person who didn't. Mm -hmm. So yeah that also depends on like your personality and like just the energy that <clears throat> you put out i got one of your dangerville frogs in my throat <laughs> <laughs> sir frogs a lot staring you down yeah no i'm just saying like yeah i mean i'm not saying everybody has to commit to working on something i'm just saying right. if two people like we're in a head-to-head -head race kind of like that, oh yeah you know or whatever like eventually that person who's working on it every day is gonna well then you oh. end up like dream theater and you're just fucking you know yeah. showing off after. <laughs> yeah 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 um i mean which is totally awesome i, I like prog rock yeah hell yeah yeah oh dude that porcupine tree concert was badass Fuck, i didn't go god damn it fucker uh, dude I got a bunch of friends that went. I can't believe I didn't go. It was it was like a Tuesday or something. Where'd they play at? Chicago and some. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a hike, man. It was like a uh, some sort of college theater or something, wasn't it? No. Yeah, it oh, was like an old school with like stage, a, and it had like college out there. Weird architecture. But yeah, I mean, it was cool, and you can find shitty versions of it with people on their phones, you know, but their light show. It was like oh, yeah, better yeah. than tools, in my opinion. Like, way yeah. better. That's well, a bold did, you, did you see the last bold tools show, dude? Yeah. I've seen both bands. Oh, you're times. right. You're <laughs> right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> tools top tier production. Yeah. Not that Porcupine Tree is not. It's just, it's a little it's different. different. It, yeah. 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 It's refreshing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love the tree, dude. I mean, all those visual. They've, they worked with that guy. His name's Lassa Hoyle or whatever. Did all their artwork for all those years. Mm -hmm. He's not doing the new record, which I don't really understand. That's kind of weird to me. Um, and the, and honestly, the new, like the artwork on the new record, like kind of stinks. 
It's fine. With, with the wolf and all that. <clears throat> no, that that shit's cool. That's actually the Hunt for the Skinwalker song yeah. shit. Um, <clears throat> which is all about the orbs. I was going to bring that up earlier. Because that's, <laughs> that's very similar to what... Um, no, the actual record cover. It's just like a... It's a tree. <laughs> it's a yeah. porcupine tree. <laughs> but like... Because they always had like the, like the five records before that. And everything in between was like the sickest artwork. Right. So, Light bulb sun. And yeah. it's just like... Fear of a Blank Planet mm-hmm. and all that shit. Yeah, yeah. Seemed like it kind of mailed it in just with the literal porcupine. <laughs> Maybe we'll put a little uh, effort into this. It's here, a little guy. on the nose. Fear of a Blank Planet. I was sure a huge fan of that album cover. Yeah, that guy did all that shit. I tried. I fucking emailed that guy. I was trying to get really? him to do some artwork for me. I'm like, come on, man. I'll pay you. Like, blowing him up. You know, let me know what it takes. You got, you have thousands of images. Let me buy one. Yeah. You know, like, come on, dude. Like, uh, no, never heard back. Probably said this before. My two favorite album covers of all time. I think it's got to be Mars Volta Deloused with that fucking duplicate album cover on either side. Yeah. You know, there's the one with the dude with his head on the table with that light beaming out of it. Yeah. And like the jellyfish face floating up. Super dope. And I fucking love that Failure Fantastic Planet album cover. Oh, that's oh, good too. Oh, yeah. You know Failure? Yeah, a little yeah. bit. Just that album yeah really. that's that's the one to know yeah. if you're gonna know any of it that's mm-hmm. definitely that one I fucking love that album they got like a new uh like some kind of concert film dropping oh nice like dude. right now like coming out like this week or something is uh like, fucking main dude still on it the bass player who's yeah, yeah. rock with the, poster for his he's still oh, multitasking yeah yeah yeah, yeah for he's sure, the yeah. front man for failure right? no he's the uh, uh he's the other guy he's he plays mostly okay. guitar and bass they switch back and forth Ken Andrews is the guy. Who oh, Ken Andrews, yeah, yeah, Jesus, yeah. And the other guys, that's that Greg Edwards dude. They're like basically the, yeah, part, yeah, the partners yeah. of that band. You yeah, know? I'm on my Ken Andrews, my guy. Yeah, that K. I was a big. Uh, what was the <laughs> year of the rabbit? Was that the Ken Andrews yeah, side that other band? Yeah, yeah. Well, that was like after Failure broke up. That was like the band he put together. Oh, it was yeah, like yeah, kind of yeah. like a super group of that genre, you could say. And they like got signed to like Electra, and it was supposed to be like kind of big. They were actually putting some money into it and shit, because you know it was the guy from Failure, and that yeah. that shit was, was breaking sweet. through oh, man, in the underground. Cool. I loved it, I but it. it was just one of those things where like it didn't break through, so like yeah. you know they get dropped from the label or whatever. Right. Yeah. The whole '90s angsty teen thing kind of flared out. <laughs> yeah, we got nothing. Indeed. Indeed. <clears throat> yeah, the music industry doesn't run like that anymore. That's yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you listen to any rap at all? Um, like some hip hop, like atmosphere. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, atmosphere's uh, prime. Yeah, it, but not really any rap, like modern rap. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. really. No. Indeed. Were you ever into it, like back in the day at all or anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Dr. Dre and exactly. Yeah, yeah. I was just curious if you were into that because that's like the really the only rap that I get down on at all for the most part. But I'm but I'm simultaneously obsessed with it. <laughs> so yeah. it's like you know yeah, that mid 90s that was the era for rap G-funk, i know everybody's man. got uh-huh. there you know everybody <laughs> oh, growing up music rock or whatever you like you kind of get framed in that era but truly like oh yeah that's the fucking city of man. compton <laughs> yeah what else are you listening to, to now like what do you go to when you got to put something on oh the algorithms are crazy man <laughs> <laughs> i i do a lot of spotify but um i don't know just uh I'm a huge Nick Drake fan. I don't know if you know who that I is. I do not. No. Oh, okay. So, yeah, he was kind of, I guess, obscure. There's no, like, real f- footage of him playing, but he was, like, one of those guys that died really young. Oh. Um, But he was an acoustic guy. He Pink Moon? Nope. Oh, man. You got to send me some shit, dude. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm, it's, I'm always up it's for from, anyway. like, a long time ago, but yeah, it sounds pretty fucking awesome. Um. And I'll just go down those sorts of rabbit holes with all sorts of different types of music. Yeah. And, so it's mostly chill, more chill kind of stuff. Um, I don't listen to metal if that's what you're asking me. Yeah. Just yeah. whatever. Like, yeah. I listen to it lately. I've been really into fucking like instrumental, like, I don't know what you'd call it, like trip hop or like lo fi beats. Cool. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like uh, Portishead kind of. No, that's more like, that's almost a little more. Yes and no. That's Massive a, Attack. That kind yeah, of this is more even more hip hop though. This is like more like oh, okay. rap style. Like it's like lo-fi beats basically, mm-hmm. um, where that stuff is a little more, little more techno ish. You know what I mean? Which I love that shit too. And I like 
I also been throwing on fucking like a there's just like a playlist on Apple Music that's like it's another like it's like lo-fi trap you know and it's somebody just like and it's all that like exact beat you know so right. it's just like an endless DJ just like really and you put that fucking shit on dude when you got to get something done like you need to fucking your work day or you got to fucking like clean the house or like do Getting some the shit like that go to you put that shit or, or it's good for a workout too yeah because it just puts you in this like constant go 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 yeah, yeah, go kind of fucking thing <laughs> yeah i listen to the, that kind of stuff when i'm uh i've been going to the the freaking gym trying to um and i've been trying to find some like good yeah yeah you know, stuff like that I switch it up between that and like uh you know and I fucking love to work out to which my buddy fucking Noah introduced me to who's been on the pod shout out to Noah the fucking soundtracks to the Doom franchise <laughs> it's wow. like, dude it's like techno metal craziness and for like if you're trying to lift weights and yeah. shit you know it's just like the heaviest synthiest that's industrialist my like bonk, you know, it's just like you're like oh you're just ready to fucking bump some fucking iron <laughs> give me some i've been doing a lot of podcasts which is not great for it but yeah, like i just can't yeah. get enough of them but uh like my go-to work i'm like give me some opeth ghost reveries you know like, yeah, give me the fucking to, uber heavy for that dude. i like some ramstein to work out to dude. Yeah, yeah any of that kind of like fucking super heavy something shit. angry and just get you strapping young dude. lad yeah he could uh, throw some shit like some that centipede uh -huh. <laughs> and like day to day you know that stuff's not my go-to and sometimes yeah. i do that shit like stuff i don't even listen like black dahlia murder like yeah, i'm not yeah. listening to that shit day to day where you're at the gym just getting after i like some like sugar that. too that's yeah. like the same, same situation uh, options <laughs> yeah. like my go-to yeah. work that like math yeah. kind of like math yeah, yeah it's yeah. like the ultimate yeah. like math gent metal mm, like gin. yeah you know, they, they, they were like the precursor to that whole thing mm -hmm. like that's what all that's based Meshug on sugar is the way to go for working out. Huge, talking yeah. mad squat right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's fucking killer adding anywhere from 10 to 20 pounds to your bench <laughs> you're rocking that abs and dude. dude i haven't been working out at all the I last know, month tough, dude I've, oh, jesus christ it's rough it's rough going yeah, I'm trying to get a little jog in here and there, but man, it's a whole other thing, like going to the gym, which I prefer doing that. I fucking hate doing cardio, but it's like, eh, it's all mm -hmm. snowy and cold. And it's like, Do you like going to a gym or like working on at home? Going to a gym just because I like that diversity. I do have a kettlebell and some dumbbells. Yeah. Like if I got to get in a quick like 25 minute type workout, mm -hmm. but you give me some, you know, not that I'm obviously like get that up on the <laughs> going on to the it kind of makes you like you're there to do the there, thing. You got to do, do yeah, the thing. It's like going to know? the library to uh -huh. do some work or something. Yeah. Like yeah. You can't do it, it from home. It's it puts just, you in the headspace. Yeah. of like, I'm here to do this thing and I'm going to do too this many thing. distractions. I got Cheetos and Netflix uh -huh. 12 steps away. <laughs> it's not a yeah. good, not a yeah, good combo right. for motivation. You know, so I was mostly doing it all at home and like and i was pretty disciplined about it but it's falling off dude yeah yeah but it's nice man you get all the different fucking you know various chuck norris total yeah. body type uh, yeah. machines and whatnot that you can leverage there it's all about that gym life indeed yeah i might end up having to do that i gotta do some this it's the fucking uh the new year's resolution right here oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, i gotta get back on that train dude i was crushing it you yeah know? yeah no, I I just been running on the thing. I haven't been lifting because I I don't want to jump into it like that because uh, I just want to make sure I can run a few miles yeah. and then go yeah. from there. <laughs> it's all the above, dude. Yeah, just yeah. start lift a lift a little bit. Like it was it was fun, dude. I really like it. Do you Sit catch any of that uh, that Liver King material? Yeah, it's been yeah, like yeah, a you huge thing. You see, you see the the apology. Yeah. yeah, that's. I only watched well, I part of it. I didn't see it, but uh, he was yeah. on the Flagrant podcast. Yeah, that's Andrew mostly Schultz what I and those to. guys yeah. and did like you know two hours on. It, it was like his go. first interview. He was trying to get on Rogan, and Rogan was like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> Rogan had, he called Rogan the, had other the other guy yeah, that did yeah. the documentary about yeah. him and exposed all the bullshit. Which is huge. Dude. Which, by the way, shame on you if you're stupid enough to think that a dude in his late 40s looks like that naturally from eating some fucking liver. Like, come on, man. Yeah, but people are dumb, dude. You can't just be out there fucking making bank on that, like saying that you're well, People got to be natty. reasonable, like, you know. Conspiracy you are by big on... liver, dude. I mean, obviously. <laughs> dude. He's saying he's fucking natty, though, and he's not. So, like, that's bullshit. And then there's the argument, like, well, what's he's what, what is he competing in, like, you know, he's just playing the game of 
capitalism trying to you know you can't well, look true. like that being natural is the whole point no, like right. i'm sorry you just fucking can't but then right. why it's lie so ridiculous. why lie because he tried to set up an empire and succeeded yeah. dude. it's worth like 100 <laughs> million you know to your point All earlier right. yeah. and in All fair right. or fairness and i'm no expert in this guy but his whole thing was like and it does indeed work, right? Like liver is supposed to be super healthy. It's basically yeah. like eat liver, work out, and feel better about yourself, which is a good message. So in theory, it's not like the most egregious thing in the world. Like it's bullshit. You should be genuine with people, especially if you're selling a product. Like don't be a weasel is kind of the first edict to live by. But in theory, he was doing it for semi the right reasons ish. So I don't think it's the most you know, egregious act of it. Having said that, you know, it's a Weasley move. You're a D-bag and a liar, but, yeah. you know. Just why, it's like, it, to me, the, I don't feel like there's any reason, I don't know. He should, he should just, he, he'd still be fucking running the Empire if he fucking yeah. just told the truth and was just like, I'm also doing this, you know. Maybe he gets bigger now, though. I don't know. This is the ultimate test of uh, no press is bad press. Right? Yeah. Maybe he blows up. Dude. Maybe yeah. Liver King 2.0 comes uh, back bigger I don't and know. faster. I don't think stronger. he made a, a big enough splash to even cameo and right. everything. In the, in, yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Maybe if he could have built that empire up a little bit yeah. more, right. more plates, more dates. <laughs> you only get one shot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. He's definitely not going to be able to maintain that fucking size. But yeah, did you listen to the whole flagrant though? Yeah, it was a little cringy at times. Yeah, dude. I'm oh, not yeah, gonna lie, yeah. dude. It was it was hard to get through. Yeah, I'm the guy was you know, getting back into the old so was beating up as a chat. Yeah, I know. Like, uh, that stinks. Yeah, come on, man. Maybe toughen up a little bit there, liver. King. Also, at the same time, right now he should be not lying and he should be saying, "I did it because I was trying to make a preposterous amount of money." Right. You know, like <laughs> if you tell me that, because we all know that's what the reality so is. He, so yeah, it's like a virtue that. thing. Like he's he he did it like for and just didn't want to. I still don't understand the reason why. He lied about it in the first well, place. Yeah, exactly. Nobody really does. I mean, he's just. I mean, in th he's just trying to. Even if he's not saying this directly, it's just you're seeing this shit for two seconds on Instagram, and it's I'm a huge guy. Eat liver, get outside, and buy my supplements. You can be me. I mean, that's the that's the message. Even if it's not the actual message. I mean, that's what he was all selling of this supp influence. supplements. Oh yeah. Oh what, yeah. All that shit. That's oh, how he's making all this money. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, you know, whatever else he's selling, I'm not fucking totally deep on it. If it's, it's all lifestyle shit, you know, if he's got a book or whatever, you know. So, I don't know if the Liver King is writing books. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to join your writer's group. <laughs> yes. Is he out there, like, hunting, like, with no, his bare hands and shit? I don't shit? think so. Oh. No, I think he's just fucking... <laughs> Again, I'm not. I wasn't following Liver King. You know, I'm more of a Robert Frank. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you know who Robert Frank is? Oh yeah, uh, I love me some Robert <laughs> Frank, dude. <laughs> what about at Bassmaster? I don't know him. Oh man, check, yeah, check yeah, it. Check it out. I'll send you a link. <laughs> yeah. Gotta get out of it. See, Rob Frank's I making know. no qualms about yeah, being on really that sick, game, right? Dude. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah to have, uh, I think he got like that. Uh, It'd have part of his colon removed or some shit that uh Crohn's or something, one of those things. Dude. Swole was the goal. Swole was the goal. <laughs> Still is the goal. Yeah. He's back at it. Yeah, that guy's a funny motherfucker, funny, though. Man. Dude, his videos are funny. so funny. <laughs> yeah, our Frank, you gotta come on, man. Yeah, dude. Tweet out. You gotta tweet out. Tweeted our friend. Robert Notes Frank from self, the Twitter. <laughs> Yo, Bobby, hook it up, man. You guys are all about the Twitter. <laughs> We're on it now. Full board now. Uh, I absolutely no idea. No what I'm clue. Let's go. Like, like, Hashtag. How do we set this up? <laughs> <laughs> all this motherfucking young man in the world. They've got no clue on how to use this shit. <laughs> These kids today are MySpace in there. I wish we should bring MySpace back. Dude, That's what we should do. Right? We should set up a danger film MySpace yes, and just dude. take over MySpace, dude. <laughs> dude. Corner the market. What MySpace. is MySpace That's doing right now? I got on there probably like three years ago or something, and it is still all like a music centric. Like it's, it was like at the time it was like the front page was like fucking Selena Gomez or something. Like they're 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 just pushing ads of shit and like. 
But does know. anybody use it no, for anything? I, I, have like, no, I can't imagine. I don't know. You know, that's what I'm saying. We'd so. be owning the MySpace so world, bro. Just take that shit. <laughs> we got to get MySpace as our first official podcast <laughs> sponsor. It's <laughs> top priority. Dude. Shout out MySpace. Let's get, I'm going to tweet <laughs> at MySpace. Who's that motherfucker? Yeah. Tom or whatever, dude? <laughs> got to get Tom on <laughs> Yeah. He's living the good life. He doesn't want to hear from anybody. Indeed. Yeah, he sold that shit for like... I don't know, man. Five hundred million. Rupert or Murdoch it didn't. No, not Rupert Murdoch. Maybe I don't, I don't know. know. No I idea. Know. Tom's fucking banging in it. <laughs> All right, fellas, what do you say we wrap this fucking shit up here? Let's do it. Hell yeah. You make out anybody else that need to talk about or anything? Then you got to put that new fucking record out. What you can do is you can come to the new spot if you want to, you know, try a song out, demo a song or something, dude. Yeah, man. Like finish I, a song and come in, bring your acoustic. We'll just throw a couple mics up, and you can at least like, you know put it down and get a demo going or something yeah i have some recording equipment yeah and like uh or bring in what you've done already yeah. and we can i, I do have some rough drafts, or something. Yeah. yeah um that'd be awesome and uh just, thanks for having me on yeah of course yeah, it's good yeah. chat with you man oh yeah yeah all right drive safe fellas peace out everybody Later. Yeah.